Do you have an airplane here? <clears throat> you guys do airplane training? We do. What? So in a, like you were saying, we don't just work on cars, we don't just work on trucks. Uh, one of our newest uh, acquisitions for our campus was our aviation program. Um, this entails whatever they need to get FAA certified for a A&P license. Kind of cool. I don't know. Uh, What's A&P? Uh, it's a airframe and power plant okay. technician. So basically they can work on every component of the actual air, uh, airplane. So um, they'll be able to like, I don't know too much about airplanes. I don't own one myself, but when the motors are due for maintenance, mm -hmm. they'll be certified to rebuild the motor or, and yeah. then the, the service intervals that the chassis needs, like they'll know those, how that works? Yeah, so we break it up into three sections. Um, your average AMP mechanic um, is gonna work on airframes, so the actual structure of the airplane, uh, the engine, which is power plant, and then the generals, which is everything from electrical to actual math and theories on how to actually balance the plane for flight, things like that. You know, we'll, we'll actually have trainers for every different function to, to Piggyback off what you said earlier, we break the planes and every aspect down to their componentry and have a class for that. This is our longest class. It's two years long um, and definitely our most intense. Uh, yeah, I would our, imagine. I mean, FAA controls a lot of it, so we have very strict things we have to do. Um, but you know what that means for us is that we have, honestly, one of the upper echelons of student coming for a trade in that regard. Yeah. Um, you know, these guys, as with all of our programs, but with aviation, it's, it's interesting to see the different level coming from an automotive basis myself that an AMP mechanic is going to have to bring to the table, which they have to. I mean, we yeah. all trust them with our lives well, when we fly. Uh, yeah, I mean, so. you know, the, uh, you don't want the motor going out uh, in the plane in the air or the you wing falling off. can't just stop if the plane stops working. What's really fascinating about the aviation industry is that while it's entirely the most advanced uh, section of our campus, it's also the most Simple. basic yeah. because these look like Volkswagen engines yeah. to me, air -cooled, right? Yeah, you know, four-cylinder air-cooled. If your four-cylinder air-cooled was, you know, 300 cubic inches. You Is know, that what these that's are? That's how big these are, yeah. Wow. So they're, they're pretty massive and they make a, a decent amount of power uh, for what they are. Now, this specific plane, uh, it, it's also from 1969. Yeah. Uh, so you know. So are you, most of the planes we probably the plane I flew in today was from <laughs> 1970. Or. What What fascinates me about that is that when you you still have this relevancy in the general aviation and the actual commercial aviation side as well. Yeah, it's just bigger. Yeah, exactly. Right? I mean, it's and all. We, I mean, aside from turbines and obviously as a prop, but um, yeah, it's wild. I had no idea you guys were doing this. This is this is like very impressive. Yeah, and the cool part too is we actually jacked this whole plane up in the air. As you can see, they have jacks in place. Okay. And they'll test things like weight balance to make sure it's they can actually set the gear up and down correctly. Uh, the whole nine yards. They'll, they've actually, we built this plane by taking its wings off and bringing it in here, and the students have reassembled it. Uh, like we told you before, nothing leaves our building ever again. Yeah. So they get the chance to actually do that. Do they, after they take it apart, I mean, I know that you're saying it doesn't leave, but I think that like in order to test their work, they have to go fly. So I, I wish we could allow them to do that. Um, <laughs> There is a, a, if there's enough uh, uh, tape to get out of the way, I would definitely do it for them. But yeah. we actually do have a live running engine for them to do that. We actually have two. We have a, uh, a little prop job like this, it's big, it's actually 540 cubic inch. I'll show you that in a bit. Um, and we have a turbine engine they can run up too. We actually have a space for them in the back to actually diagnose an engine, checking things like EGTs, uh, checking cylinder head temp, checking compression while it's you know, just run, things like that. They'll do oil. Uh, testing on site to see if there's any particulars. Yeah. Like it gets intense. Awesome.